Okay, you're uh, you're uh... so because I want to because I want to do the last story because it's really one of those heartwarming kind of things. Yep. Honestly, your little heart will will burst on fire and you'll reach for Tums. Well, probably not the best. I can't probably, wait. Could we just skip right to that, please? Probably not the best sell, but what do you got? I'm sleepy. Uh, I mean, we work all these days. I'm tired now. I'm goofy. No. You're sleazy, the dwarf we don't talk about. Where was I now? Oh, yes, you're person. liking, subscribe. Please, little person. Wow. After all this, I'm supposed to say like, subscribe, and follow. This is truly news. It yeah, just doesn't sound genuine. No, not anymore. No. Anyway, do, do it, it anyway. Just like, subscribe, and follow us. And who knows? Somewhere along the line, we might actually be entertaining or fun for a minute. Yep. And you don't want to miss that because yep. you want to. That way, you can keep it and say, "Look, I, this was the one time these two guys were actually entertaining." You'll know because it'll surprise us too. It will stand out like a sore <laughs> toe and a bad thumb during a picnic basket. Exactly, with a bear yeah. who's pooping in the, the woods. Place. I don't know how the Pope fits into all this, but I'm sure he does. He's on the piano bench with Beethoven's last movement. You're evil. You're just, you're going straight to hell now. You know that, right? I don't care. Pope says. This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. Now you have to do the first story because I got a long one. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I'm so, oh, 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 sorry. Chinese have been acting. Oh, Listen, have they? kids, you know when you're doing stuff and you go, oh, that knee, that hurt. Don't do it anymore. Just a I, I, it, Which knee is it? Both are achy today. Uh, only my right one today. But I, I'll never forget, we were playing what? On, uh, an executive course. Yahtzee. No, we were playing an executive uh, golf course down here. Were. And you took a swing and tumbled forward out of the yes, tee I box. <laughs> I kind of went, yep. what the heck? And it was because it was, I heard click, thump, 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 thump. And yep. I looked over, there's Tony rolling yep. out of the men's tee box. I went, yep. Huh. That was the first indication that maybe that knee wasn't, maybe I shouldn't push forward and turn more sort of thing. <laughs> so this is, Michelle sent me this. Oh, hi, Michelle. And I didn't have to pay a dollar for it, so I'll use it. Oh, very nice. Thank you, Michelle. It's from a book called Mardi Gras Beads by Doug McCash. Just saw a cartoon. Who early quit. Mardi Gras in caveman times? Yeah. <laughs> I actually beat. looked up pictures for this to see if it I get the feeling yeah. Mardi Gras was much different in nineteen forty nine. Oh sure. Yeah. But the women are all throwing off uh, bead necklaces made of boulders. <laughs> the guys are all plump. That would be more realistic. <laughs> Well, I'd like it. Who would have predicted that pearls made from all natural materials would become a health hazard? Just because it's all natural doesn't mean it's not dangerous. 1949. dangerous for Pete's sake. That's, well, except us. We're kind of harmless. <laughs> well, we can rot brain cells, but that's another story. In 1949, certain strands of beads and bracelets thrown by swimmers during Mardi Gras were made from a cardinal-colored seed. That would be red. Containing one of the plant kingdom's deadliest toxins. Let's call it Phil. Phil the toxin. According to a newspaper article at the time, if one of the throws you've caught during a Mardi Gras parade is red and black beaded bracelet, be careful, especially if there are children in the house. A Loyola pharmacy student, William Grace, had captured a bracelet made from the sinister Asian Australian Abra seeds. They're known as rosary peas. He astutely recognized. Are the there any cadabra nuts running around? Abrus, cadabras. Yeah, I get it. He astutely, I'm laughing inside. Inside, I am like rolling on the floor. Tears are flying. He astutely recognized that the botanical danger was there. He, uh, who the hell wrote this? He astutely recognized danger. the botanical danger. Mm. Well, the two words just don't usually go together. And alerted his professor who sounded the alarm. I just picture him running out and hitting a lever and off goes the alarm. <laughs> Abris seed jewelry had apparently been sold across the country. One child in Wisconsin had actually died after sucking the seeds off a souvenir bracelet his mom uh -huh. had bought in Florida. The deadly scarlet seed beads were... Hmm. Good Lord, man. Yeah, were marketed in several Canal Street stores preparing for Carnival, 
which is carnival to you and I. Yeah, that's correct. So it was hard to tell how far and wide they had flown. They had flown pretty far and wide. The Louisiana Department of Health recommended the poisonous seed beads be destroyed as a precaution. But the agency could take no further action because, well, they're the government and impotent. Oh, and the deadly seeds were not offered as food or medicine, so therefore they're outside their jurisdiction. So look at that. Not only are they incompetent, but they they know how to pass the buck. Yeah. The Ministry of Health, for example, relied on shopkeepers to voluntarily withdraw the remaining pearls from circulation. Two months later, a U.S. newspaper reported authorities had finally managed to unearth thousands of necklaces and bracelets using the deadly beads, some as far away as Hot Springs, Arkansas. So what if you put it, it ended up in one of the hot springs and kind of deteriorated there? Would that be? Hey, I have no idea. At least one New Orleans resident took the appearance of the poisonous Mardi Gras beads as a sign. Of? It is 1949. According to an advertisement dated March 19th, 1949, the Reverend H.B. Ropey's fasting radio sermon on WNOE would address the dangers of accepting something for nothing. <laughs> Suck on this. Uh, wow. Uh, it was not. A, I mean, I've listened, man. After all those years at, at this is at uh, this is this is really at uh, talk the walk. What was it? Yeah. Trust me. There have been way lamer sermon series done. <laughs> well, I'm fair certain of that. Yeah. So, um, I don't know if you ever have you ever been uh, a member of an HOA, Homeowners Association. Oh God, no. We have. I'm in, sorry. And you remember in our quad? Home? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was an HOA. And uh, see, they're great because you're not supposed to have to shovel or or do the mow the lawn, lawn or any of right? that sort of thing. But there's always some busybody on the board who's driving you nuts. Sort of a rule. I only got one of those. Now that would that happened uh, the year Drew was born. Remember, it was the drought year where it would be 90 degrees first thing in the morning, and the sun wasn't even up yet. I do. And uh, we grabbed a window air conditioner because he was coming home from the hospital and put it down in the basement under our deck which we're technically not supposed to have the deck <laughs> the window air conditioner oh well, um yeah so, god forbid you would be like you know comfortable <laughs> but we uh you're supposed, hell, Omar. In, you're supposed to put in a whole house one wasn't we it 87 88 89 oh somewhere whenever he was 90 born. somewhere right in 86. there were just hideous and uh <laughs> Um, but it was a hot heat. It was. It wasn't. A it moisture. was bad. It was bad. And I got news for you: when it gets to be hundred degrees, it's hot. I don't care what the humidity is. <laughs> yeah, the humidity is irrelevant to the heat. So we got uh, we got Drew home, put the window air conditioner in, told the president of the HOA, "Hey, we got a brand new baby, and brand new babies can't sweat." <laughs> so we're put we put in a window air conditioner. When this thing breaks, we'll we'll take it back out. She goes, "Yeah, all all babies learn it. that later." Yeah. And uh, then Usually their first job. Next thing I know, and of course I'm a tired dad. Line. Yeah, because the baby has been waking up. It's at what night. a baby does. It keeps people up. At, but after 18 years, you can sleep in once in a while. Someone comes to the front door and says, uh, "You got to take that window air conditioner out right now." Go, and who are you? I'm on the board. I've never seen you before. I don't know who you are. Yeah. Well, the rules say, and I said, "Yeah, yeah." We already talked to. I think it was Pat. And uh, yada 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 yada. And Patrick she kept. It was your. No, 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 no. It was Patricia. There's a, he's, he's a crossdresser. Um, changed the, oh, okay. so yeah, right. Well, at the time he was a crossdresser. I, I assume now he's trans in any now case. He's merely an angry stove. <laughs> so huh? it'll come to you later. Don't well, worry. Wow. Well, no. in any case, he, uh, I'm looking for she, articles that are, you know, she was giving ahead. me she was giving me a hard time. And I finally said, you can go. Just leave. Don't come back. You know, and uh, then we called. No, no, it wasn't Pat. It was uh, it was Ann. It was a woman named Ann. Sorry. Forgive me. That's called your her wife, back. you idiot. No, it was another Ann. This Ann had an E at the end of her name. I know my wife because my wife doesn't have an E at the end of her name. And I Wait, don't you have married my e. sister. Yeah, pretty much. Ew. No, not really. Boy, you should really oh, apologize that to would your be, wife. I should apologize to your sister. In any case. No, that might be entertaining for a minute. Sorry, go ahead. So um, 
we called we called Ann and, and said, hey, this is what's going on again. Is this a story you're doing? No. Wow. I will be, though. But won't. this is how they go. And Ann says, don't worry, I'll take care of it. It's all fine. Not all HOAs are run by jack wagons. However, this poor guy owned a bunch of rentals in a bunch of communities. He's no By the strange. way, if you don't live in the United States, jack wagon is not a term of endearment. <laughs> this guy's no stranger to HOAs in court battles. In fact, he has a company attorney on retainer. So he moved into a community, finally bought himself a house he planned to stay in for a while. Well, lady got elected to the board and she immediately hated him. We don't know why. But it all started when he requested. Did he have, did he have a little itty bitty mustache? Like he was Hitler? Yeah. No. Mm. He requested the following one HOA financial documents, which at the writing of this had not been returned or not produced in two months. Two, a temporary reasonable accommodation after a major surgery. Okay. And third, he asked that the president's husband not change his oil in the parking lot. So the new pres hits back hard. So far, he, he's received four notices for speeding in the parking lot. A political sign who was an opponent to her political sign in her front yard. A construction noise complaint and destruction of community property for washing my car with a hose. So let's go way back to that attorney who's on retainer. Mm. He goes he to must work. Just chuckle, and he he's, uh, starting, he's starting to look at Mercedes. Oh yeah, he sends me all the emails to the association, the management company, and I wish I was making this next part up. Karen is so stupid; she replied all on an email meant just for the property manager. Here's a couple of snippets. I'm going to keep finding him and make his life horrible. He is a nightmare and a punk kid with too much money. We're going to drown him in lawyer's fees and send him the bill until he finally submits to me. So now this is personal. So we know what she does for a living. She's a dominatrix, right? <laughs> I'm on a mission to show that punk kid, that punk kid with his parents' money, that I'm president and he will do as I say. My lawyer called me six. Six times, I say, at 10.30 last night and said, check your email. At 9 a.m., my attorney sent a cease and desist to the entire board that included a copy of the email. <laughs> Our phones have been blowing up nonstop from the four other board members and their attorney trying to just talk. This woman may be the stupidest person on earth. I honestly cannot wait to see the fallout from this. But be honest, I mean, at least, you know, she may be stupid, but she is vindictive. Right. And she's got that going for her. It's such a positive. It's how you keep the economy trait. going if you're a lawyer type. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. I, even I couldn't. Choice. I would hope even I wouldn't be that stupid, but you never know. All right. Picture this. It's kind of a, a bittersweet time at our house because my eldest granddaughter, my first grandbaby, First of all, she's an adult now because she turned 18 in September and explained to us for the six months prior that soon she'll be an adult. Mm. Thank you, dear. Yeah, still looks like my granddaughter, though. Mm -hmm. Still Probably still like behaves like her, too. Granddaughter, too. So that's mm -hmm. you got that going for her. So it's, uh, I called it the Shelby farewell tour, right? First right. there was the swimming part of the farewell tour. Then there was the hockey part of the farewell tour. And now we're in the final stretch. The softball farewell tour begins in a bit. Okay. But picture this. Moral High School. Moral. M-O-R-R-I-L-L. Moril? Moril? Maybe. No, Moril. Moral High School. More oil. The coach of the cheerleading squad there is Albert. Uh, uh, Albert. April Ott. It's like Albert, only a girl. Coach Ott had to break the news to Katrina Cole, the senior, the only senior on the squad, that she was the only one left on the cheer squad. And she promised her that even if she couldn't compete at the state tournament, they would still enjoy the whole experience. They get fun. They get coffee drinks and watch the more than 2,700 girls and some 225 teams compete in the three day cheer and dance competition held in Grand Island. We'll just go a, out shopping for neat shoes. We'll just have a good old time, right? Right. But Cole, that lone senior, had been in a squad for four years. The other four freshmen 
had recused themselves because of personal reasons for some reason. I don't know what they are. After talking it over the mom, Della, she decided she had nothing to lose and told her coach, I want to go to state and I'll cheer by myself. That's what she did. Wow. One and a half weeks before state, after the three freshmen quit on him, Ott and Cole reworked all of the Lions routines into a one girl show. Then she stood, she did, in the Heartland Event Center all by herself on February 17th and performed solo in the game day Class D competition. Cole had expected to have a few fans in her section during her routine. She got the grandparents were in the stands for her. Okay. The folks had gone to Omaha to watch her twin brother Daniel compete in the state wrestling tournament. Been there, done that. We've split up a lot. Yeah. Yeah. We had to do that in rugby when Ian was playing on the West yep. Coast. Yep. Instead, her section had way more than her grandparents. It was packed to the gills with other competitors and fans from other teams. In fact, the whole arena became part of Team Cole. The senior said, I probably, had the, I probably had the loudest crowd there. <laughs> Everybody was cheering with me, and it was amazing. Cole, by the way, ended up finishing eighth out of 12 squads in her division, which is not bad considering there's a lot of point things you can't do when you're just you. Yeah, well, you can't throw yourself onto your own shoulders and lift yourself over your head. And it's hard to be a pyramid. Yeah, well... It was the highest the Lions had placed in the past three years. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. Coach nice job, Coach Ott said it was an amazing and wonderful experience. Cole, usually more a follower than a leader, she said, had stepped up this year and taught the newcomers the ropes. She was a great teammate and a positive role model. So if you're wondering, our senior, um, who's not quite as outgoing as you would think, right? But circumstances. Yep. Um, she's got track and field next. And I do mean track and field. She runs in the 400 and competes in the high jump. And then next year, she's off to the University of Nebraska Kearney to study nursing. From there, she's going to do a stint in the Air Force. Oh, isn't that sweet? I think that's fantastic. And I love, young lady. Crowd, I love the way the crowd got behind her. That's she fantastic. Was, she was apparently getting emails from all over the state from other cheerleaders and other cheerleader squads thinking how cool this was. And all she could think of was, when I was out there, it was scary. It was very scary because I'm the only one out there. So I screw up. Everybody knows it. When I started my routine, it was like I blacked out. Muscle memory had to do it because I wasn't thinking. And then as the crowd got louder, it's like they helped calm me down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you feel all that positive energy coming at you, you it's just... It's really hard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. I just thought it was very cute. And I'm going to... I'm I'm refraining from, from Nebraska jokes for the rest of Lent now just because... Oh, that's that. a really good idea. Thank you. Uh, we had... You reminded me of something that happened on uh, Saturday night. Last Saturday, uh, the band played in a new location at uh, Bowling Lane in Delano. So is it S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y night or Saturday night's all right for fighting? Uh, we did Saturday night's all right for fighting. Carry on, my wayward son. <laughs> <laughs> I've got nothing. My mind just went blank. I can't. It's okay. Uh, I love your Saturday crystal night. blue persuasion. In any case, um, well, I panicked. It's, it's crimson and clover, but thanks. <laughs> In any case, look at that. I even stayed with one of the same bands. Um, I I got my uh, our our male lead vocalist and keyboard player who who has a little trouble with his haberdashery, um, and he likes to wear like like uh, Crocs on stage, right? And we're going, oh, good lord! What so I started buying him these really cool shirts that have this sort of Greek or Roman theme on them, and they're very silky and shiny. And they're not playing leapfrog, are they? No, they're not playing <laughs> leapfrog. <laughs> so. There's, <laughs> you realize this show is going to take up a whole week, right? I don't care. Oh, okay. this, 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 so uh, the crowd, first time there, loved us. Biggest crowd they'd had there in months. Crowd was screaming after the songs. We finished the night and one guy forces him to sell his shirt. We have a picture of it up on, you, you might've seen it up on my uh, Facebook page. Uh you know the shirt I'm talking about, the gray and yellow one. Yeah, And so he sells the shirt. Singer comes over to me and says, well, here's the money you gave me. Is that enough to buy a new one? Nope. <laughs> but thanks. Yeah. But I'll get you a new one ordered. No problem. See, it goes one of two ways. You're a little <laughs> bit short or you can buy three. <laughs> Those are the only. There's never any in between. These can be expensive shirts. Some I've seen them on. I've seen them. People selling them for 200 bucks. A piece 
I don't pay anywhere near that. You got to know where to buy them. I, uh, my brain cannot comprehend $200 for a shirt. Mine can. It's stage wear. You get to write it off. One more time. So wait, if I wear expensive stuff here, you can write it off. That's just wrong. <laughs> this is True Really News. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.